Luxedo just released version 4.10. This update significantly improves the scene editor by updating the timeline and reworking masks so that they are a whole lot more powerful. In this video, I'm going to walk through some of these changes and show you how you can best utilize them to create the best possible light shows. Let's jump in and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is create masks for your most recent calibration. If you've already created masks, you can skip this step, but if you've recently recalibrated or never created masks to begin with, you're going to want to follow along. Creating masks will save you a lot of time in the future because every scene you create will automatically import the masks you create in this step rather than having to be recreated for every scene. To get started creating masks, you're going to need to come over to the Projectors tab, select the device you recently recalibrated, and go down to the most recent calibration right here. You can see I have a new snapshot here, but I have not configured any masks for it yet. To do this, we're going to click this Create New Masks button, which will open up the Mask Editor, and you can click this Create New Mask button to begin creating your masks. To best utilize the mask editor, you're going to want to create a mask for each individual section of your home or projection space. In this case, we're going to create one for each individual garage door, the trim around the garage door, the front door, each window, the shutters for each window, and the facade of the house itself. To do this, simply get started by selecting the section. In this case, we'll start with the garage door. I'll name this garage door right because we'll be masking out this right garage door. And then I'm going to select the square shape so that I can start with creating a square. When you're ready, click this create mask button and this will put you into the mask creation mode. Now I can click and drag on the canvas from the corner to corner to create a rectangle. Now we have a mask created for the right garage door. Let's do the same for this left garage door. Now that we've created a mask for each of the garage doors, we can see the previews over here on the left, and if you hover over them, you can see each one get outlined in yellow. Now we're going to want to create a mask for the trim surrounding each of the garage doors. To do this, we're going to click this Create New Mask button once again, go down to the Trim section, and I will name this one Garage Door Trim Right. That will allow me to see just by the name which mask we are looking at. Once again, we can select the square shape and then click Create Mask. I'm going to start from this corner drag all the way to the other. But because the trim is not a perfect square, we'll need to make some adjustments. To do that, simply click this edit button. And now we can add, remove, or adjust any of the points along that mask. To add a point, simply hold control and click on the path of the mask. If you've created too many points, you can hold Alt and click just to remove it. And we'll need to create points all along here so that the mask perfectly reflects the trim. Once you're happy with the outline, click Complete. And you can hover over it once again to make sure that it perfectly outlines the section. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this trim as well. Now that we've created masks for both of the garage doors and the respective trim, we'll go through and follow that same process for each one of these windows and their shutters as well. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see here, I've created masks for each of the individual windows, the trim around the windows, and their respective shutters. Here you can see I created two different masks for these windows because of how much trim was in the middle. But now that we have those created, we can move on to this door. I'm going to follow the same process and create a mask for the door, the trim around the door, and both of these windows. So as you can see, I've created a mask for the door, the trim around the door, and both of these windows. And now we can move on to masking out the entire house as a whole. To do this, we're going to click Create New Mask again, select the Facade section, and for this one, instead of using a square, we're going to use the Free Draw tool. This works a little bit differently. Instead of clicking and dragging, you just click for each individual point. I'm going to click this Create Mask button, and start in this top left corner, click once, and now we can just drag and follow along on the inside of this trim. Once you're finished, you can click this complete button and it will finish the line you see right here. And if you need to, you can go through and make any adjustments. I'm going to slightly adjust this one right here. Just click the edit button. I'm going to move this node just a little bit to make sure it's flush with the side of the house. I'm going to go through and make sure each line is perfectly reflecting of the space I'm trying to mask. And when I'm done, I'll click complete. Now we're going to want to repeat that step for this area as well. Now that we've created a section for both the bottom facade and the top, we will want to create a mask for the trim next to both. So we're going to once again use that free draw tool. We'll call this facade trim top. And once again, I'm going to use the free draw tool. And once again, I will do it for this facade trim as well. Once you've created a mask for each individual section of your projection space, simply go down here and click the Save button. Now that they're saved, you will be able to see each individual mask in this area right here, and you'll be ready to create your first scene. To do that, simply go to the My Shows tab, click Create Scene, Select the projector you want to create a scene for. In this case, it's my Luxedo. Make sure the correct snapshot is selected and add a title. And then go down and click this Create Scene button. This will take us into the Scene Editor where all of our masks will be imported. Now that the scene editor has loaded, we can go to this mask tab and we'll see every single mask we just created. If you want to see a preview, simply click this little drop down and you'll be able to see a preview or you can click on it to select it and you could drag it and move it around on the canvas. Now to use these masks, we'll need to start applying them to layers. So for example, I want to put some content down on this facade and this facade, but I want it to be the same content. So to do this, I'm going to select the facade mask, and I'm going to scroll down to this apply to section and create a new layer. Now we have this new masked layer called facade, which contains that one mask we're going to want it to show up in this area as well, so we'll need 
the top facade mask to be applied as well. To do that, simply go over to this area right here once you have the mask layer selected and find the other mask you need to apply. In this case, it is facade top and then click the apply button. And you can see here, we are showing inside of those masks. So if we click apply, you'll see it shows up right here. And now we have facade and facade top applied to this layer. Now, if we want to apply content to that layer, we go to this media tab or we could apply shapes or text, select the media, and then make sure we apply it to the correct layer. I don't need to worry about extending the duration. And so now you'll see it's masked out by those two masks, but it's not being masked out by these windows at all. So we'll need to apply some additional masks for the windows and all of the trim. If we were to change this layer to show outside of the masks to accommodate for the new masks we need to apply, it would ruin all of what we've set up and just show outside of the facade. We don't want that, so we're gonna change that back to show inside. And now we'll need to create a new layer, which will house all of the masks which live inside of the facade. To do this, once again, we need to go to this mask tab and select one of the masks which lives inside of the facade. For this example, I'll start with the garage door trim and we'll create a new layer. So as you can see, that created a new masked layer. We'll call this one facade internal. To better see the masks we're trying to apply, we can hide this layer so that we can better see our snapshot. So now let's select this facade internal and start going through each of the masks which lives inside of the facade. So for example, we have the garage door trim right. Let's do the garage door trim left. Apply that one. Then let's go to each of the window trims and the shutters as well. So now, as you can see, I've applied a whole bunch of masks to this layer which we can also see right here. And we'll need to make sure that this is showing outside of each of these masks. Now, to get this to apply to the media we had in the other layer, we can just go ahead and drag this in here. And so now we can see it's being masked on the outside of each one of those masks, but it is no longer being masked by the facade. To accommodate for this, all we need to do is drag this internal facade into the external facade. And now, as you can see, all of the masks are being applied properly. We are projecting outside of the trim of these garage doors and each of the windows. So now we can press play and see our media begin to play. So now that we have the facade taken care of, we can move on and add some layers for each garage door. This will be a lot more simple because there is not any additional masks we need to apply to it. So to do this, just go to the mask tab once again, choose the garage door and create a new layer. Let's repeat that process for the leftmost as well. And now we have a layer for the garage door left and the right garage door as well. So let's go ahead and apply some content for garage door left. We can use this gold tunnel. And for garage door right, we will use crazy colors. And so I'll move the time so that they all start right at the beginning. And as you can see, they are masked out perfectly by the garage door. And if you press play, you can see all of your content begin to play. If you wanted these videos to loop, you can click here and adjust the time, and now you can see where it loops. This seems to be a perfectly looping video, however, 
so you shouldn't even be able to notice. We'll do the same thing for Gold Tunnel as well. And so now you can press play and see your content masked out exactly how you set it up. And when you're happy with it, you can simply click Save and Render to finalize your work. So when you're ready, click this Start Render button, and that will begin the rendering process. Once the render is complete, you'll probably want to play it on your device. To do this, simply press this Schedule button. That will take you back to the portal where you can schedule your show to play at any time. So you'll want to select the time range. For this example, I'll make it play from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. every night for the next seven days. Click Schedule, and you will see each instance of the schedule, and you can click here to get a preview. If you need to edit your scene, adjust the time the scene is playing, or simply cancel the scene playing at all, you can use any one of these three buttons. Otherwise, you can give yourself a pat on the back. You just created a Lexido show from start to finish. If you ever have any questions, you can send us an email to hi at lexido.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching.